The following views and opinions are solely those of myself, Scooby, and or any other co-hosts I might have with me from week to week, and in no way represent anyone officially associated with Dublin. We're just players playing the game our way. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Icon Variety Show. I am Scooby, and I am here, as always, with my co-host, Cam. How are you doing today, Cam? I'm living the dream. <laughs> right on, man. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, no, uh, this has been like a week with up and we got we we actually things we've been speculating about for weeks and weeks and weeks now what are the fan scores going to be how are the legits going to work what are these stadiums going to be about and we don't have everything but we have some answers now how have you been stacking up how have your uh, team fan scores been doing so i have enough legits that i have what like over 16,000 with new england um, Damn. which i don't know the entire entirety of the list i haven't seen it but from what i understand most people say i should be in the top 10 to 20 no doubt um but literally every other team i have is like sub 500 because i've just done a good job of trading trading into new england right i know you were you were interested in getting new england that was kind of your bag with that because uh, i i happen to have one of the mementos and we worked out a side deal with that as well um I'm, I'm glad to hear that you uh you managed to do so well with the fan score there and um yeah f- from what i heard i was in the cafe the other day, and TM was in there, and, uh, I mean, you know how TM went with this, um, and he was saying that his, like, his good stuff was, like, around, like, I'm going to say, like, the, I think he said, like, the 20,000 range, and so, like, if that's his reference point, then, yeah, I gotta think you're top 10. That's what I'm thinking, because I, I mean, he was just in the cafe dropping some of the numbers just on the last few days, he's dropped, like, 2 million plus in legits just in the last, like, 2 days, like, 3 days. <laughs> oh, if I heard him correctly, didn't he also make 30, 32 million in Upix last uh, last month in like revenue or profit or I assume I assume I, he meant profit. I think so. I, I I hadn't heard that figure, but I mean TM is one of the largest property owners in Manhattan. By I, mean, I got the amount of unrealized gains he has there is mm-hmm. probably sick is probably sickening. <laughs> so no. I would not be shocked to hear that he made thirty two million. Now, f- fair disclosure, you you know this, but for anybody that may be listening later on, uh, when when I'm talking about the cafe, like I, when I'm in the cafe, I'm I'm uh, I'm walking, I'm like at work, I'm not looking at my phone, so I may get like maybe that wasn't him, maybe that was another big player, or maybe I misheard him and it wasn't thirty two million up because he was talking about some sort of real life profit, but I, I think that's what it what, what he said, and well, I mean, with his holdings in game, you know damn well that's not an absurd statement from him, yeah. I that that wouldn't surprise yeah. me at all. I mean, he's talk. You just listen to him talk about being there with some of the OGs in Manhattan. Just they were just minting for fun, like just to talk mm-hmm. and chats together. Just like, hey, let's go mint this area. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. So, uh, but sixteen thousand. Wow, that's great. I uh, I uh, went across um, just like some of the. I went across like the teams because it has you know the number in there um, before you even click on it, so you can just kind of scroll down a little bit. And I think that my highest, I think I had two teams that I had like 2,000 in. But then I looked, I, I have two mementos still, and they're each worth like 1,800. So I'm just like, okay, well, that's clearly the, clearly the bulk of any fan score I have. Yeah, no, I actually, I, I'm interested, really interested in some of the next steps um, as far as making replicas and stuff with essentials, because I literally only have two Patriots mementos, that one from you and one from another deal. And the rest of my score is coming from essentials. So like 12,000 plus is all just in massive amounts of essentials. Right on. Yeah, no, I mean, that, and that's, there's nothing, uh, that's a way to play. You know, it builds up your fan score. It puts you in better line if you want to mint those future mementos at those times. Um, which, have you been looking at the market for the, uh, for the ones that have been dropping now that people have the chance to buy them? I have, and I mean, it seems, I actually like how you can get individual mementos for p- people and players like that, because I don't, I don't really want to buy a game pack and mm. have a 1 in 32 chance just to start off that it's a person on the team that I want, mm-hmm. and then um, what are the odds that it's somebody that I really want, like, that I even want on my team? Like, yeah, I'll take anybody from New England, but, like, they're definitely players I'd prefer, and now if I can mm-hmm. get, I would rather... Go sp- I'd rather pay a premium to get the guy that I know I want versus having to just keep throwing money at lottery. No, yeah, and that and and that premium is an interesting uh, rate there too. I mean, let's uh, let's think about it for a second. Okay, so 
Uh, well, first of all, is there any chance of getting a memento in an essentials pack? I can't remember. Is is there one of those like point oh oh one percent, or is it just like no? No, you cannot get a memento in an es- essentials pack. Okay, great. That makes that makes the next math way easier. All right. So then, what's the one where you where you get one? That's the game so, day pack. Yeah, you can get them in a game pack in which that's like eighty thousand, and but that's going to be up to everyone but your top three players on a team. So you can't so you can't get the top three players in a game pack. You gotta go to the superstar pack, which now right. you're looking at two hundred two hundred thirty thousand, I believe. Right. Well I'm thinking I'm thinking basic. I'm thinking the most the most basic scale. So so the cheapest memento pack you can get costs eighty dollars in Ubix. That's what we're saying, right? Yep. Alright. And what's the cheapest memento you can buy for a player? That's the from, hat, right? Yes, yeah, so from what I've heard, it's like forty k. It's forty thousand upics, right? So it is. That to me almost it seems like you're better off buying the pack, or I mean, not better off buying the pack. Um, that just seems like you're almost better off buying that because there's uh. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, no, I think you're a hundred percent better off buying it that way. Because if not, especially if you have a desirable team, you're going to have to go out and find it from somebody at more or spend ungodly amounts in pack openings hoping to get somebody. And right. the essentials themselves, the market's only valuing them at like $1 to $2. I mean, obviously, uh, rare mints and ways, and there's things that affect that. But right, 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 a, right, general, right. a general essential is going to be 9 out of 10 pieces in that game pack. So if you get a trash memento that I could have bought on the market for forty thousand, I'm not gonna make up that forty thousand from that pack in essentials. It's just not gonna happen. No. Now there is something to be said that if you're buying the pack solely for the for the fan score, you're getting a guaranteed amount, right? Because every memento is worth eighteen hundred. Or oh are they're probably worth different ones. I just happen to have two of the same kind, don't I? Yeah, so the caps are different than the jerseys and then you have it even broken down further where a starter cap has as much fan score as a contributor jersey. Okay, are there are caps and jerseys the only types of mementos? Aside from, like, game ball, of course. Uh, yeah, aside from the game ball, yes. Okay, so those are the only two, and uh, the cheapest hat goes for 40 How much does the cheapest uh, jersey go for? I actually don't know off the top of my head. Um, well, I, I haven't... I, I, had I haven't up. tried... Yeah, I need to go in there, because I haven't tried to buy any yet. I'm waiting till next week. I'm focused on um, staying in San Francisco for these hunts, and my team's not playing in San Francisco. Or right actually, on. there's no state, though. No, well, yeah, yeah, the, the, I mean, I don't give them, honestly, of all the things, uh, I've heard a little bit of flack, but uh, me personally, I say give them a break. That they, they said, all right, we only have these four or so much done, so we're shoving all of the teams like split across them until we have their stuff actually ready. Like, you can't say you want in-game functionality, but you have a problem with them bending the rules a little bit about that. Like, no, come on. No, people are being ridiculous with that because they're also complaining that we're dropping cities too fast. And right, which, like, all right. What do you want? So exactly. You, yeah. Do you want all the NFL cities or do you, like, what do you, you can't have it both ways. Yep, absolutely. All right, I'm going to, uh, on the video side of this, I'm going to, um, here we go. There we go. I pulled it up in game, so I'm just showing on the video side of this. Anyway, all right, yeah. So here's what we got. We got um, I'm seeing jerseys for 180, uh, 60. It looks like the cheapest jersey is sixty thousand. Uh, cheapest hat is uh, yeah, forty thousand. I'm pretty sure is what we had uh, determined. Oh, well, that's eight. Yeah, cheapest hat is um is forty thousand. Although, damn, it goes all the way up to four hundred thousand for a hat and six hundred thousand for a jersey. Can you name uh, when you're looking at that? Uh, either of those, what's the player's name? Uh, okay, they are both for Arizona, and they are DeAndre Hopkins and DeAndre. Oh, they're both DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> so both DeAndre De- Hopkins is their is their elite player. Gotcha. That's why that's so, and that makes sense because he is. Probably is, if not the best, one of the best wide receivers. All right, and then I see the Ezekiel Turner must be the opposite end of that because we got forty and sixty there. So yeah, so okay, so, um, so I guess with the with the, with the with the eighty dollar pack, can you get a one hundred and twenty thousand Upix hat or one hundred eighty thousand Upix jersey? Being that those are the medium, or are those only for another pack? 
Um, you know what? That's a good question. What uh? Can you name a player that on that? Oh. Yeah. Hold on one second. I uh, I, I pressed the button. <laughs> well, because honestly, what I think it is, is I, I, I should go in there and look. But what I think it is is that that four hundred thousand one is going to be your elite player, your number one. And then I think the 120,000 or whatever are going to be your key players who are still within that top three that you can't get in the regular 80 pack. I be, um, Yeah, you can't get the top three players in that game pack. So okay. that's what I think. Though I think that you would still need to get a 230,000 pack, which means that you, all right, you got that guy, but that guy wasn't the most valuable. Okay, so then, so then just by, all right, so, so going by the base prices that Upland has set, you cannot get a memento in the $80 pack worth more than $80. Yep. Unless, yeah, no, unless it, I mean, there are a couple players that you might be able to squeak out more or if they had a really good game, but as right, no, as that's tell, what I'm saying only base prices, only base prices. You, yeah, no base prices. No, it, you cannot get anything more than what that's worth. Right. Okay. So here's somebody we got, uh, Jalen Thompson. Is is one who's one twenty and one eighty that middle of the road? I'd have to look at their team yeah. list, but I would assume he's a key player. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But that's cool. Yeah. I I don't like that. I feel like there should be an element of chance that you can always get a little bit more than you put in. That's that whole gambling factor. You know. I mean. Uh, it, otherwise, even a small percentage. Even a small yeah. percentage. No, that's definitely going to make. It, and I think that's why you're seeing the game pack still available. Everything else sold out for the most part, but the game packs are still available, and I think that's exactly it. People are looking at these values like, why would I buy that? If uh, un- Again, unless it works out for a just for fan score. I know that I'm going to get between this amount and this amount for $80, for whatever dollars. If you're looking to just pad a fa- your fan score ac- across the board, Baking on being able to sell it on the secondary market, I guess. I don't know. That's all I can figure. But, yeah. It, it might be worth it if you pull it and you get, like, a decent memento. And then you maybe you get an away jersey. And then you can, you yeah. can trade into that value. But until they, until they at least come out with, like, a game pack where I could say, all right, at least let me get a New England Patriots game pack. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's 100000 But at least I was able to, or 125000 even. But at least I'm able to guarantee that the player I want is from my team. I'm not going to buy an $80 one and then risk having to trade that and ha- like trying to make moves to get that. I'm just going to go to the oh, market. For sure. And- for sure. Uh, I just had a thought though. Okay. So the 2020 packs were pre-minted as we know, because the games, you know, they already took place. They were the previous season. So, all right. For if they sell 2021 packs, how can they include mementos in them unless they specifically withhold the mementos from these shops? I, I was actually thinking about that, and I don't know how they fix that. I don't know what that looks like. They'd have to, re- they'd have to specifically like unlist it from the shops, like because you can't if it's, it's one of one. Maybe if there's unsold things, you can they can package them up. I don't know. Are they not burning the ones that don't sell? I was under the impression they were burning all the mementos that don't sell. Because, I mean, a lot yeah. of them are not selling. Is that the case? I don't know that that's true or not. I'm right now looking at a screen of green uh, buy it now options for Arizona. No, no, no. I know that it's true that they're not selling out, but I'm saying is the burning. Oh, out. oh, oh, I have no idea. I had heard they were burning them, and, that they, and therefore that um, uh, it was speculated that could create scarcity. Um, you know, if you just ha- happen to be the on- have the only memento for this shitty player for the entire year. You know, it, it market does what it does. But that, you know, you're right, it, that only works is, if they burn them. And it is interesting, though, because let's say you buy before the game starts, you get yourself, like, a uh, 40,000 one. So if you know something about that team, like you know this starter is out, this kid might get a chance and might have a great game. Or it could be the game that he gets realized like you could mm-hmm. pull a lot of value out of some of those low, lower tier players they could be nobody too but mm-hmm. like that's gonna be a fun gambling aspect of it yeah i don't know it's um i i'm very excited uh f- for the i'm excited to see where these mechanics go this is a this is a great first step um i think that there will be more i think that eventually there will be some sort of uh maybe even like fantasy sports element even if not in a gambling sense just in a like um in-game rewards like medals or something you know 
You can there 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 are ways to get around the legal issue of betting there by just not doing it with money. Uh, and I just think that it, it, oh, go ahead. I right, just do it in Upics. Yeah, if they if they can. Yeah, I mean, but I think we're gonna, that it's gonna it's gonna go beyond just being uh, the fan score. Um, at least I I hope so. Uh, I mean, they spend all that time and, and and money and whatnot in building the the stadiums. I hope that we see something in the stadiums other than just these menus. No, the whole fantasy football aspect of it that I've heard um, the potential of. I mean, to be fair, that's mostly community speculation. Sure. Um, I don't think I've seen anything official, but I mean, no. that just makes sense. The market wants it. Like, even if it wasn't in their initial plans, I mm-hmm. think that it's something that they'll end up incorporating because the market wants it. Yeah, I agree. I think it's one of those common sense things. I think it is something that they would love to do and uh, are hoping that they'll be able to as well. Um, but they're smart enough to know you don't announce something like that until the ink is dried. And they don't have the NFL. You're cutting out. We can't hear you, Cam. You are talking very, very faintly from inside of a tin can. Do you need assistance? Here, I'm throwing down a rope. Catch. Splash. Can you hear me better? There he is. We got him. I knew the can trick would All work. Right. Anyway, <laughs> um, but right on. Uh, you were, uh, you were, you cut out uh, the last things you were saying though. Um, if you wanted to repeat. Oh, I was. This has really been. This was really big confidence boost for me because I, uh, I know you, you were there in the cafe when I had said that I plan on selling a good portion of my upland. Um, not getting out of the game by any means, but to explore other options. Mm-hmm. And I, I. I'm not going to say that I'm not going to explore other options, but I think I'm reconsidering how heavily I'm going to sell out um, because they addressed a lot of issues I had this week. It, I'm really excited about what Upland did this week. Well, I think quite obviously they were in the chat with us, uh, know the exact amount of influence you have over the general community, and they were shaking in their boots and they said, <laughs> we got to do something. We got to address this. That's obviously what happened. I would like to believe so. <laughs> I know, right? But no, but uh, but no, I, you're right. I was there, and man, I got, I got, I got. Oh, we lost Cam. He's gone. He is out of the voice channel. Oh, he's back. Woo. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, uh, I gotta say, there were people that got really defensive when you suggested that. Like they, like, like they acted like you were just straight out exiting, ghosting, just like boom, mic drop. I'm done. I thought I came in fairly reasonable and fairly measured, and I tried to make it very clear that I don't believe that that Upland is not like I don't think Upland's failing. I don't think that you know that I'm not like guys like the sky is falling. I was just I'm going to explore some other options with my investment, and they no, that was a very intense reaction. Yeah, I mean, which on the one hand, you know, passion's good. You love to see a passionate community. Um, I I have to admit it, it bordered a little bit on aggression though, and I'm just like guys, I it. Like, it's cool. Like, you, that's a good thing to do. That To suggest that diversify, I mean, you know, not financial advice, but to suggest that diversifying your investment portfolio, uh, specifically in reaction to the investment not performing like you want, that, that, that's how it works. I don't know. Like, it was weird. I, I, it, I was a little surprised. I, re- like, I wasn't like, uh, I thought that that might be some reaction, but it was definitely mm-hmm. a bit more intense than I, I anticipated. Oh, sure. You always know there's going to be a few people that are diehard fans that are, you know, I mean, you know, they they, they bleed blue and gold. But, uh, like, you know, it, that was, like, the majority opinion. It was it was weird. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, like, like even though, even with Icon and everything that I have in, in Upland and it being a very, very long-term play for me, even I've been like, all right, well, I could I could diversify a little bit and get a little of that sandbox thing. I haven't yet, but I've thought about it. That's okay. I just don't want to have... I am very much, and I have very much been just kind of full-on into Upland, and it, it's it been great for me. But I also don't want to keep blinders on and pretend that everything is always perfect and okay and that there couldn't be another option. 
Absolutely. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, we talk a lot, a, 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 a lot people talk, talk a lot about the metaverse uh, and um, Web 3.0 and the next iteration of the internet and what it's going to be and everything. Um, and we're on just like, we're, we're in the infancy states of it. Um, and it's like, you know, we didn't, Google wasn't always Google. There was a time when Yahoo was Google. And there was a time when dig.com was a really big thing. Uh, and Reddit hadn't even been thought of yet. And I'm not saying that anything's going to come along and, and, like, straight up usurp Upland and, like, like knock it down or anything. But things will change. You never know what's going to go to the moon. It's not a bad idea to say, well, I'm going to put something in that. You never know. And I, that's really all I was trying to say, too. And I made it, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not down on the community. I just, uh, you have a real, uh, you have a strong community base. That's for sure. Yeah, no, they definitely do. And like I said, passion's great. It was nice to see that. I mean, I guess I would rather have seen that than the opposite of people saying, yeah, definitely get out. It's burning. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. And that's <laughs> that. I, I'd rather see the community defend the project than then tell me it's trash and to go away. So, I mean, yeah. it was a cool conversation. For sure. Did you, uh, so uh, did you grab any of the holiday ornaments? I have every holiday ornament. Um, there was one that I was not going to grab kind of at a protest. Um, not going to get into that. I'm sure you kind of get it, but yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but then TML came in and said, uh, he's buying any of them at two X that you don't want. Yeah, so I was like, oh, right. there's no reason not to buy them all now. He said that on his podcast and then doubled down on that in the cafe. He he is serious about it. Like, even, uh, I mean, I don't want to say even more so, but from the enthusiasm in his voice, maybe even more so than he was about the legits. And I was, uh, I wish I had held off some of my block, exp- some of those block explorers I had sold before the Bronx to get into the Bronx um, more, heavy, uh, more heavily and waited on TML because he came in and paid 100k just on one of them that I would would have gotten rid of for half to be honest. Yeah, now he's uh, he's also very bullish on the block explorers for sure. He's doing um, I mean, oh, he's basically doing valuations, doing his own little estimates and pricing and everything. And I think that's great. I don't know how you how you uh, judge that market when it's um, I mean, you know the like. It's never been a thing. We we we've always talked about being able to, but now we actually have these two for two trades, and I love that. That's the utility we have as a community have found for the spirit legits. I don't know. They've just become widely referred to as the burner legits, basically. But they're so useful. But but and they're so plentiful. It's perfect. Yeah. No. I mean that I. I almost wonder how much Upland had intentionally put those out there uh, at this point because they knew they needed something in between. If they knew the order in which they were developing and that the, um, uh, it was gonna it was gonna be like this for a while, may- like maybe they had the foresight for that. I mean, they it would be silly to suggest that they are obtuse enough to not know the community standard that is burner properties. They know. They know exactly what we're doing. They don't love that we're doing it, but they acknowledge that the reason we're doing it is because of uh, the, the time frame on their part that they haven't gotten these in-game functionalities to allow us to do it the mainstream way, so they have allowed it, kept quiet, and it, it is what it is. So, yeah, no, I could absolutely see them being like, we they're not going to openly endorse it, but being like, well, here's an ease of transition. And I mean, I think that's, that's smart, though, you know, and I mean, they've the, the up one has been really smart about when to step down on things and when to just kind of let the community provide, even if it's not the solution they want, it's, they understand that you need one. And I mean, as soon as they put, put trading into place, they knew that these were going to get mm. sold and flipped. This They knew that they knew that there was no way they didn't foresee that. Absolutely. No, you're, 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 you're totally right. Um, and, but you know, they, uh, Nobody bats a thousand. Nobody's ten for ten. But I, I, I agree. I think that Upland, by and large, a vast majority, they handle things the way that it should be handled, or or at least as best as they can. Um, you know, there are some things that are outside of their control. 
Uh, for instance, some people live in countries that that don't that they're not able to play the game because of international like sanctions and stuff. And like, dude, Upland is a company. They're not a. They're, they don't have international like UN level sway. They can't. They can't swing that. Yeah, we actually had a guy come in from I Iran. <laughs> that was crazy. It, it it was rough. It, it was, and we don't want to get into that, you know, too much. Um, and because you know, we don't we don't care where you're from. We don't care which. Be a good person. That's it. Awesomeness. Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't personally care what any individual is doing. Uh, it was just really that was a weird like mm-hmm. the community understood that you could not tell this guy around it real quick and just stomp that down. Like that exactly. was really that, that was honestly in obviously that's not the yeah, that's not even a conversation you want to have but the fact that the community s- stood up very quick and protected the community that was really cool yeah uh one of the things i love about the upland community and specifically the cafe community is that um we recognize that it is a privilege and not a right we recognize that it could be technically and by technically i mean like technologically like you know the server people it can be taken away at any time uh, and we recognize that it's on us to maintain that level of civility and following those, uh, you know, the the rules and stuff. Um, and you know, nobody, we, we can't, you know, we can't all follow the rules all the time. Uh, we all, you know, slip up and curse, or um, yeah, accidentally show up intoxicated, or you know, what have you. But but by and large, it has proven to be just like one of the healthiest communities ever. And uh, as a group, very focused on self-preservation when any when any issues like that or terms of service uh rise up i it, it's completely as far as my experience in gaming and online communities or anything of the kind i have never seen something so well self-regulated in so much in so much care and attention put into doing the right thing pretty much always yeah no they do yeah but uh, but um, going back to the holiday ornaments, uh, so I think I got all of them as well. Uh, there were twenty one, right? Yes, because what there were three per structure type, and you have two smalls, one large, two luxes, the small ranch, and the apartment. Yeah, so you have seven seven types of buildings, three per each. It should yeah, twenty one makes sense. I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I got all of them like until it told me there weren't any left and I counted my emails and I saw 21 and I was like, shit, I thought there were only 15. So, uh, <laughs> I was like, well, I guess it's all of them. I mean, I was off by six, but in the opposite direction. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't know we had that many types of structures. You, you don't really think about it until you, you start to start, you start looking at them. Cause also it's two of them really aren't, different like you have the small townhouse that's subdivided twice and then you Mm -hmm. have the luxuries that are subdivided gotcha yeah that's fair yeah yeah but um yeah i was just gonna say by and large the community kind of like just looks at those as the same thing yeah right um yeah, so yeah, I think I grabbed all of them as well, and um, yeah, there were there were a lot of fantastic ones there. Uh, I'm very excited to be able to to decorate uh, the the buildings I have. Um, I actually I, I want to I'm gonna I found a a whole block I own in Carroll Gardens, and I'm going to build structures on it um, over the next year, so that next year I can like set up like a proper like 21 winter wonderland. That's my plan. I can't do it this year. I don't have you know I didn't have it set up, but by next year I'll be able to do that. Do you plan on decorating Mosswood this year? As much as I can, absolutely. Um, I have uh, uh, several of the different types of structures, but um, I honestly may just uh, uh, take mine and uh, do temporary swaps and uh, uh, get them on some other houses just just to just to see it all light up, you know? Because we definitely have all the structures. Yeah, we have everything in Mosswood for sure. Yeah, I mean we're we're at. Hell, where are we? Let's let's go check that out. Let's get a call. We should uh, where is that tool? Do, do, do. My goal in Mosswood is to have one of every structure. I have a lugs. I have big townhouses, small townhouses. I will have an apartment again, and I want to get. I just because I want to get a property where I can build a small ranch. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Trying to find, I'm, I'm I'm in the upland data, you know, they do uh, ranking, ranking. Where's I'm looking for the one by uh, per capita because that's the one that 
in my opinion, makes the most sense. Here we go. All right. As of uh, 5.40 a.m. Eastern Time, we are still in the first place because the actual first three are all uh, outliers. They have one, three, and six properties, respectively. <laughs> Which, how does that happen for neighborhoods? Explain that to me. I mean, you have some small neighborhoods. There's, there's several that... I mean, one, three, and six is kind of ridiculous, but... Um, I mean, some neighborhoods that are largely overlooked right now that I think will be very valuable in the future for those exact reasons. Um, okay, all right. I, I agree. Uh, I want to specifically talk about the first one, the museum campus, because I'm realizing that's the stadium. And I would submit to you that that doesn't need to be a neighborhood. <laughs> no, that doesn't. There's also <laughs> uh, there's an entire neighborhood in... Um, I think it's in San. I mean, I think there's more than just the one in San Fran, but that comes to mind. There's one in San Fran that is literally this entire unminted park because it's like thirty thousand UP two. Um, but that is the entire neighborhood. Is this one unminted thing? Like, why is that a neighborhood? It, is it? It's, is it locked? I assume. Surely that's yeah. not okay. I was gonna say because if that was open to be minted, that would be snatched up by somebody. I mean, honestly. <laughs> What's crazy about this game is uh, we didn't know each other at, at the time I'm about to reference, but you but we would have both been in the game at the same time. Remember back when there were certain properties that were so expensive that you could just like you didn't it, you you knew they were too expensive for you, and because so, like there were some properties where you knew you could be like, well, I'll come back in a week; it'll probably still be there. But there were some that you were like, oh, that'll be there for two years. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Who's gonna drop seven million epics on that? I mean, back then you had people like we look at now, like thank me later and stuff. The, like some of these people were like low level executives or even like directors were looked up to at that point. Mm -hmm. The idea of a chief executive never crossed anybody's mind. <laughs> oh, hundred million epics, like yeah, maybe in five years. That's right, exactly. exactly. What I would have thought. Exactly, yeah. So it's 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 just it's crazy, yeah. But no, the, some of the ones like that, like like museum campus, that doesn't need to be a neighborhood. Nobody's ever going to move there because the NFL PA is not going to sell. It. Anyway, disregarding that, Mosswood is in the lead. We um currently have forty point eight eight spark uh staked across the uh, four hundred and fifty properties. Um, we have uh we are a gonna finish soon our 150th con uh, uh, completed structure we have 149 total we have several in process one should be finishing soon that is incredible yeah i have one that's finishing in just over a week i believe right on yeah and uh that puts us up uh, uh, by the way officially over 33 uh point uh or 33 percent we're at 33.11 percent so with our next property we will be over a third uh of the entire neighborhood so that's yeah um, we need to start talking, uh, in, in Icon about the, the zoning map. Um, we, we had put one together just kind of like, uh, as an idea months and months and months ago. Um, but now we're going to be getting MetaVenture soon and we actually have stuff developed. So it's time to start, uh, making some decisions. No, oh, I'm really excited about the position that we're in where it gets a lead from the front. Yeah. Although I'm not gonna lie, looking at the map though made me sad because um, in it we still owned the police station. It, it was obviously I... way before the hack. That, it sucks to look at that. I know. I'm just like. I, I do like the idea though of like some of the cool, fun things we might be able to do with that. Maybe make it a forest or who right. Knows. That's that's where I, that's where that's why I push so hard in in every single avenue and form that I have in Upland. I push for that community governance. Um, I try and throw, I mean, you've, you've, you've seen me in the different chats. I throw out as many ideas as I possibly can for what we could do with neighborhood governance. Um, not because like I am, I, I think I should be, I just want them to listen to us and not take that for granted. That will be the well, key to this whole metaverse, I think. That's the thing. There, there needs to be a balance, and they need to step up sometimes, and you know, just say this is the law. But uh, it, this is a community game, and this is the metaverse that we're building. Like, and uh, based on the original idea of the game, like I, I don't see it any other way than it should be kind of community run. 
And and I do, I understand at least starting off doing it as a uh, like you know rudimentary basic just yes no f- uh, um a uh, uh, list of options like from the get go okay fine you have your neighborhood you have the votes uh, here are the things you're allowed to vote on things like being allowed to keep your houses decorated all year long. That is the kind of thing that an HOA in real life would vote on. It's simple. It's yes or no. It's, I'm sure, easy to implement in the game. Like, even if it was just basic stuff like that starting out. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that that is honestly one of the first best steps that they could take is to allow us to have Halloween Town or Christmas Land. Right. And, I mean, the converse side of that would be, okay, or you can vote to be super strict and you can actually limit the uh, the colors that any of the structures can be. So maybe that as as a neighborhood, you agree that all of the houses and and buildings and apartments they all have to be either black or blue, or whatever. No, I would absolutely love that, and I actually am kind of hoping that it comes just so that one of the communities I'm building in, um, I'm I'm building a structure in Portage Park, mm-hmm. and I am purposefully doing it a different color. I had property there before they decided to make it a certain color. So I, I don't – like if I were to join now, I would uh, abide by that because I already know the plan. But to me, I was in there before you had a plan. So I am purposefully building a different color structure. I kind of would like to see them be able to vote me down for that. Absolutely. I want them to be able to. Yeah, no, absolutely. There, and that's – yeah. Or even perhaps maybe because you know it, it's all in the game itself. It's a UI thing. Perhaps they could do a thing. Uh, they could vote to change the color. Right, like maybe it doesn't have to get torn down. But you know what? You don't get to pick your color anymore, bud. Like you just you you, you sign in one day and you're like, my house is blue. What the f- who did this? And they're like, we did. We had an emergency meeting last night. You son of a bitch. Because I kind of did it as more of like just a joke to see if like if somebody once it's built, I'm going to put it on the market. Not insane, but a bit above what the market's asking. I want to see if somebody has enough just to be like, you know what? I don't want this in my neighborhood. You're playing mind games. I love it. I think that that's that we need to remember this is a game, too. And like, I don't I'm not doing anything really malicious. I'm built a a structure in your neighborhood. If you don't like the color and you don't want to wait for governance, buy me out. No, I love it, really. No, absolutely. It, it, it's fun. It's, it's mind games. It's got that bit of psychology. It's got that bit of game theory element to it. You gotta love that. And, like you said, um, you, know, it, it's not, you know, it's a game. But also, we know it's not just a game. That's what I love about the metaverse. That's what I love about all this you know, play-to-earn uh, element is you get to see... You get the element where you get to, to kind of play with their minds, but then you also get the economic value of seeing the actual reaction because you can make money uh, off of that on future strategies. Yeah, initially, I won't lie, I was going to go completely ugly. I was going to go and go backwards, do it crooked, do everything I could. I went to go build it, and I was like, you know what? I actually like what they've done over here, so I'll just change the color. But, mm-hmm. um, but you know, I... I I I hope somebody buys me out, and if not, I hope that it sits there until they vote me out. I, I'm I'm doing that just because I'm interested to see what Portage does with my property. Let me know too, because I'm interested too. Because like you put that, you know, at, at the certain point above the floor and everything. Um, and it, like if it gets snatched up immediately, well, now that that means something. If it sits there for four days and then gets snatched up, that also means something. No, 100%. And I want to see... I, I'm just interested. Like yeah. like I said, if I end up keeping a structure in Portage, cool. That's cool, too. I like yeah. what they're doing. Um, It's not my main area or anything that I'm concerned with, but I'm buying into a lot of these neighborhoods just mm-hmm. to see what happens with them and to be able to do fun stuff like this. Absolutely. No, me. I think I think we completely agree uh, um, in the element of the structures being essentially a store of value. They are never going to be worth less than X amount just by the nature of their utility within the game. I don't, unless Spark goes down considerably in value, I don't see how it could be worth less than its Spark hours you paid for right. it. Exactly. And I don't, and, and because of the very nature of how they've implemented Spark, I don't see how that could happen unless, uh, short, short of perhaps a massive, massive bug in the Spark treasure hunts. Yeah, and let's hope nothing like that yeah, happens. Yeah, oh god, I and... hope that never happens. That would be awful. That, that would potentially ruin the game. I mean, yeah, no, I don't. Want, I definitely don't want to see anything like that with the game ruined. And I actually, I don't know what the number is that'll be a 
good amount of Spark because I know that there's still a lot of building that needs to get done and a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that will have to be done with Spark. So we probably need more, but I don't. As much as I want it accessible to the average player, I don't want it overly accessible. That's not its point. Okay, to that end, making it accessible to the average player. Um, I definitely agree that I like they can't lower the price. Um, I don't think they legally can, actually. I'm wanting to say I heard somewhere that like because they set the precedent for it, that would be like an issue. I might be talking out of my ass, not a lawyer, but um, they. I think that's pretty much off the table, right? I mean, they've. I don't. I think you're right. I don't think they can actually lower the price in the marketplace, but they have, between the treasure hunts and stuff like that, found a way to kind of get around that and still make it available to people. Right. Okay. To that end, um, I want to say that uh, um, it looks like they added a couple of tiers of Spark to buy in, uh, or at least one in the most recent sale. Did I see one for point oh five? I'd never seen that before. So previously we had three, and the lowest you could get was a quarter spark. Now right. we have a point a point one and a point oh five, and based on the point oh five price, we've actually significantly increased the price of spark. Oh, because that working backward, the the more you buy, the better the bulk deal. So therefore, working backwards, the more you'll be paying. Yeah, okay. Yep, yeah. it would actually be six hundred dollars a spark if you were to get it at its lowest value. Or As get opposed the lower. to for what? What is it? Four sixty for just buying yep. one straight up. Yep. Mm. Mm. Well, still, even so, offering the lower amount for a lower price, even if it doesn't scale uh, like it should, that makes it a little bit more accessible for some. As far as the treasure hunts go, uh, good for people to have the time to do that. <laughs> I have started doing it. Um, right on. Because I, I don't have like a whole lot of other gameplay besides buying structures at the moment. Um. So I've started doing it, but I definitely don't do it to the level of some of these people. Like, I have no problem. I'll even burn through sends sometimes that I probably didn't need to, or I, I'm definitely not overly conservative. If I pull one, like, one of those little spark chests a day, two of those little spark chests a day, like, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we have the sparked up that you could go for right now. I've tried. It's getting tougher and tougher, so I don't even really compete for that. I'm just, I'll keep what building those it? little amounts. Um, the sparked up. So there's a whole other tier of Spark Treasures right now, kind of like the exclusives and the limiteds, but it comes out every 15 minutes. Um, you can, you, if you get one, you're on a three-hour cooldown just like the other ones, like the other competitive chests, but it has upwards of like 0.15 Spark in there. Damn. All right, well, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely worthwhile. <laughs> um, those are super competitive, super hard to get. So I'm just still going forward with getting the ones you can get in your standards, which in San Francisco is 0.02. Not considerable, but I mean, it adds up quick. No, it definitely adds up quick. I mean, if you ever, if uh, for anybody that that, that listens, uh, you know, check out the cafe and uh, mm-hmm. listen to Lemmy uh, talk about his treasure hunting and how much he's able to get with his maps and stuff. I won't drop what he has but our own mossy jake has done very 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 well for himself i'm not surprised yeah well he's he's also one of them data people he probably knows a back end or something to the upland mainframe clearly what, the issue, <laughs> clearly what it is i saw it la- i saw it last week on the net with sandra bullock <laughs> i never I actually think. i never actually saw that movie no, but it's, I mean, some people have definitely played the game and done super well for themselves. Mm-hmm. And people who literally were almost non-competitors as far as Spark was, like some of these people came in, you know, they've been around the game for a while, but they came in a bit later than us. So they didn't get that drop when Spark happened. They had a little bit, but they didn't get four or five Spark type stuff. Yeah, but that is something that, is something that I, I, like I see the new players coming in and, and trying to do stuff with little amounts. And I'm just like, man. I am and I'm glad I joined the game when I did. That that worked out very well for me. <laughs> I know, I'm at a point now where between what I was dropped and my reward for going to executive, I'm just over like five and a half and I haven't purchased any spark from the store. Um right on. And I, I and at the time I was I was down on it like, oh I know there's players with more than me and now I look at it like wow, like yeah, there's yep. players with more than me, but I am in a great spot and much more thankful for what I have than what I realized it, uh, initially. Yeah, I think what it is, yeah, because like there are players with, with more, and there, I mean, there are players with a lot more. There are players with like like over ten, like approaching twenty spark probably. Like it's it's insane. Um, 
But if you look at the ratio of like all the players in the game, like like those are outliers. Like like me and you, way ahead of most of the pack. Yeah. And I mean, just when I hear people talk about like months to build a small townhouse and I'm like, oh, I can bring yep. one of those out a week. Like, OK, exactly. And that that's where we've we've seen how that plays out with building the res the, the, the residential structures. We've seen how that's played out so far with the uh, the, the 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 player market for Spark. Um, it'll be interesting how that then transitions to uh, business structures when they finally release the generic business structures that are upcoming. Do we know? Do we have I any idea when that's coming? Uh, we, I don't think we do. Um, it's still just a whole lot of hope. But I think that with the incoming business structures, which will probably be a considerable amount of spark to build, and cars and other places and decor and other places where you could implement spark, and all these cities that you're going to have to spread spark across, I think the what spark's going for on the market now, as far as like renting it, is so much cheaper than people realize and it's i i think we're gonna get into a situation where sparks worth at least double on uh, on the leasing market whenever the time comes that we're building structures to actually put in the businesses i think you're absolutely right i think we're going to see a surge in demand because there's gonna be, i mean people that have their businesses that want to be the first to get their name and their recognition out there you know these are also the same people that are heavily involved and heavily invested and are going to be willing to put down a pretty penny to get as much as absolutely possible so I think that, yeah, we're, we're going to see an interesting thing happen to that, to that secondary market for Spark when that happens. Um, personally, I'd like to see some sort of uh, transition op uh, option for Spark. Like, like, okay, you have your small townhouse, right? I would like to see an option where you could spend the Spark hours to transform it into like a mom and pop shop. Yes, I definitely, even if it, you know, there's a penalty because you've already built it and now you got to remodel and we know remodeling right. costs something. I definitely would hate to think the only option we'll have is to demolish a building and then go into a new one. Like there's got to be a way to set, sa like to salvage those hours. Like we know the hours that got put into it, right? Like couldn't yep. you, let's say it's a, even a 20% penalty, 25% right. penalty and Something is going to cost, I don't know, a thousand spark hours, or you already put a thousand into it. You get 750 credited towards your new thing. Hell, they could even uh, charge Upix on top of that just for the, uh, the you know, the fee or whatever. Um, but as I understand it, I think that what it is is going to be that, that your option is you can either you, you can use the residential structure for your business or tear it down to build a new business structure. I think that's the way they see it, is that like, they're not stopping you from using the in-game functionality. And while that is true, I, I think that it would, be, it, it would behoove them in the long run to respect how much investment the community has already put into building. I, yeah, no, 100%. And I don't care if the... Even if you want to say the cost is like 30, even 50%, like let's say the cost is considerable the remodel like that's mm -hmm. I, I can understand that but i don't think you can completely disrespect what they've already done because here's the here's the scenario for you and we and you could easily see it happen a scenario where they put out they allow the beta business people to to put in their shops but they don't have the business structures ready what do they do they have their properties all all, all lined up for where they want to put it but do they just, I guess, go ahead and knock out a townhouse real quick? Or do they go ahead and put it in one of their already built townhouses because they're waiting to build the new structure and they want to transfer the business license? Or, like, it, who knows? It's, it's complicated. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot that's going to go into that. And I, I don't know. I don't mean, I don't think it'd be the end of the world if structures end up having to get destroyed, but it's going to be a big deal. And I don't think. And I, I think if that is the way they go, it's something that they need to consider heavily and not let, not be lightly just being like, telling people to destroy your structure is no big deal. Like, they need to have a reason behind it. There needs to be a technical reason why they can't. Like, you need to give me a reason why you can't upgrade. Like, I think the onus of proof needs to be on them on that one. Yeah. Um, I also think, uh, um, um, just to be clear, uh, when you when you put the business in the property and the structure and everything, is that taking up the? Is that what takes up the uh, a living unit? I think that's another thing we're not sure of. I would assume so. Like the way I would look at it is, if I have an apartment building, 
I can put my business on the bottom floor like you right. could in the city, and the other seven are livable. Now, to that end, could you expand that out and basically build a mega mall of seven or eight businesses inside one apartment building? I think you should be able to. I think why if why, if you're in a if you like Mosswood, let's say that this apartment building is now in a business zone. Why could you not put eight businesses there? No, yeah, and that's something that's exactly something I'm thinking about. So, uh, and maybe they'll allow that. That's gonna we gotta wait for that for for that that um to actually start. And if they are gonna fit within their original time frame, they have one day. So I don't want to put this as an ultimatum, Upland. But you, you you said this fall, the solstice is the 21st. That is the beginning of winter. Um, you have 24 hours. <laughs> Get cracking. <laughs> oh man, when are we? When, but realistically, when when do you, when are you, Cam? When are you expecting us to see a a, a, a business beta and in, in proper function? I don't think we'll see it until January. Unfortunately, I think that the unless they have, you know, they could have a lot of things under wraps, just waiting to open it up. But you just dropped this NFL thing. That's still kind of unrolling. You mm-hmm. have their. They have their auction, like their black tie event that they have coming up. Oh, the gala! Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. We need to talk about the gala. We have the gala coming up. I mean, you have Christmas coming up, and as much as it's a game that doesn't necessarily stop because of Christmas, I mean, you know people are going to be setting aside a time for that. At a oh, for point, sure. Like, I, I, I think it'd be kind of... like. Kind of rude to drop it, drop it in between Christmas and New Year's. Like that's not a good time for most people. No, I agree. I don't think they will either. Um, and, and, and you know who else that wouldn't be good for? The 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 development team. Uh, <laughs> like I don't think that they want to deal with that headache during this time of year either. So yeah, I agree. I think that they were in crunch to get the stadium out and that proper NFL functionality with the, with the mementos. Um, and, and, and they did, and we saw that. And I think that that was their last, uh, technological big, like hurdle there we're going to address for the year. And I think they're going to cap it all off with the gala and that's it. When is the gala? The gala is what? The 21st? I don't know, man. I'm asking you. Are they having it on the solstice? Shit. Appropriate, but let's see here. I... I believe. Let me go into the announcements, but I believe. Oh, geez, that but, it, but 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 that's the thing, Cam. Is it in announcements, or is it in upland updates, or is it in maintenance, or why do they have seven channels? That is a good question that I don't think we have a good answer to. <laughs> Here we go. Because people people do lose things in 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 that. They're like, oh, I didn't see that. Why didn't you see that? Well, because it was in the eighth announcement channel. Yeah, I'm not, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to read through them real quick here. So we got announcements, and then change log, and then Upland updates. Then on down, we have uh, feedback, which doesn't even exist anymore now. Support FAQs, technical bugs, and maintenance. Maintenance is like, tw- I just, it's ridiculous. But uh, the gala is the 22nd at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So it's going to have the rarest and most exclusive properties from across the metaverse, including a few unminted properties of our own. And then apparently he meant to put in an eyes emoji, but he accidentally used brackets. Yeah, I saw that. That was, that was funny. I, I'm not judging X1, but like that's just one of those like, oh, X1. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you think about the up the network requiring 500 players or 500 active members of a community to get listed in the uh, directory. You know damn well how I feel about that. What the fuck? I don't like I'm not even mad. I'm I'm genuinely not mad. I read that and laughed. That's it's absurd. You in doing in making that a requirement, you are immediately putting out a majority of the communities. You literally have left us with like the UCC and what? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe Up- Upland, Upland uh, Nights. I guess is, is Upland Nights still uh, still around? I, I I personally had to leave that server because I had to I had I had too many servers on the left hand of my screen. But how many people are in Upland Nights? Let's see. But no, I mean, hell, how how many people do we have in this server? Like a hundred and fifty, two hundred tops. 
I know that at our top, at least in the old server, I don't know how many people still haven't transitioned officially or anything, but I know that we had like uh, 150 to 175. Yeah, we're we we've we've got about how oh, not quite half transitioned over. I'm I'm working on it. Um, you know, it's part of it's that time of year. I'm sure uh, every now and then I put out a new announcement. Uh, my next step is I'm just gonna go in and start DMing everybody. Um, ultimately, this is something though that like. We use Discord for everything. I mean, even Upland uses Discord for, for all communication. But, like, the game is Upland. So, everybody that's an icon, whenever we're able to talk in Upland, that's going to be the day. I want to move everything there. I, I worry about some... I mean, I just see the way the game plays now, and sometimes we get bottleneck congestion with what we have now. I don't know how much that can be expected banded upon i do worry about little things like that yeah i think that well that, uh, that's a that's way above my pay grade the technical part of that i don't know how it works um i hope that they can either buy more people or more boxes or maybe more cables more clouds is that what it is can you buy more clouds are we only using one cloud maybe we need another cloud i don't know you man. need to have multiple types of clouds you need the cirrus you need you need them all. yeah there we go there we go <laughs> I, but but seriously, whatever it is, there's just something that needs to get more of it. So we'll see how that works. Um, I don't know. But no, I think, I mean, I don't think, that, I could see a day where 500 is a reasonable number, but with where we're at currently, and even just where servers at a certain point start to fracture beyond a certain number, even if everybody's cool, like ideas yeah. fracture, like people have, like, have different ideas and then some people are going to follow that idea to its end and some people are going to want to follow another and well i yeah, also 500 is a tough goal to obtain beyond a few specific like niche areas right exactly and that's where i think that um that that number is uh biased towards the data tools communities because more people are inherently going to join a join a server uh that they're not actually like you know and there's nothing wrong with that, but like I, you know, I'm in the Upland Data server. Um, I'm not talking there. I'm I'm going there regularly to check a thing because that's what it's there for. But because I'm in there, I'm one of those numbers. Whereas act, whereas player communities, which are in that list, they said straight up that they would like that this was for data tool communities and player communities and all that. But player communities were not that big. I mean, hell, we have like 150 members and like. We have way more than the UDU, um, which there's nothing. That's not a the, the UDU has a totally different uh, uh, player model for how they induct people. But the the point is, the UDU is like the OG player community, and they're ineligible. Yeah, I can't. I on it off the top of my head. Besides those data groups in the UCC, I can't. I can't name one that would qualify. And they, even if you want to just discount, discount icon, fine. Like I, I there's. There's other great projects that do not fit that requirement. Yeah, no, and that's uh, um, actually uh, uh, Banana um, made uh, put a post on the new feedback website they have, and I made a comment on it, and I'm gonna do my own post at some point. But yeah, he basically was saying exactly this, and that um, if 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 nothing else, they should like make basically. I think he said they should basically make it granular and like these, you know, lower the lower the requirements for different types of communities. Okay. 60 days, fine. Fine. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's how I feel about that. I'm way more happy with the Upland 12 Days of, of Christmas in the Cafe, or 12 Days of Cafe Christmas, or whatever. I'm not sure what the actual title is there. The 12 Days of Christmas was great, and honestly, it's been really fun, and I, didn't, I thought it would do well, but I have been surprised at how <clears> well <throat> we've done it, uh, completing some of those structures for people. Yeah, um, honestly, been doing so well with that that I haven't been able to even keep up with the addresses. Half the time when I'm, uh, you know, in the cafe or whatever, it's like, hey, drop the, the address that we're staking on. And it'll be like, all right, now go to it. And they'll be like, oh, it's almost maxed out. You can put 0. .25 on it. And I'm just like, okay, but it's going to finish in 35 minutes. Do we have another one ready? Yeah, no, it's, that's, that's a really fun and cool thing that uh, it's, it's cool to see so many members just want to give back inherently. Like, I think that I, I know that Upland's given me that sense and wanting to give back because Upland's given to me. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. And it's, it's cool to see that realized. Absolutely. No, I love it. And, uh, um, the, 
the whole event they're doing uh, every night at um, oh hell, <sighs> it was 10 p.m. for me, 9 p.m. for Uplando, but he's Central, which means that it's 7 p.m. for Pacific Time. There's too many time zones, man. Anyway, they do that every night. Um, it's and, always a big hit. I mean, it's been it gets a huge amount. Of, it gets us way more people than the cafe typically holds. Yeah, I was only able to make it one night because that that, that that's too late for me. I mean, especially this time of year. I'm I'm uh, <laughs> we're the real Santa Claus. So um, yeah, but I did. Uh, I I got some caffeine arranged for me for uh, uh, the other night and stayed up uh, uh, with them. And I had a great time. They were doing trivia on Crowdper, um, and it just it was just it was a lot of fun. I gave away a bunch of properties um, and uh, some block explorers, which uh, apparently I have to wait until they have the whole shop thing to actually give them away. So they're just like on reservation. I mean, you could wait. I, I'm sure you could all. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean that that makes sense too. No, I talked I talked to Plano about it because I said I said straight up, but like because I had offered one initially and then DM'd him when I realized like oh man that, that that'll have to be for a trade or something. Um, that was before I I uh I think that was before though that you could do any legit for any legit. But then also, what if the winner doesn't have any legits and yada yada? Um, and I guess that he was saying that uh, I think he told me it was gonna just we're just gonna wait till the shop is there and then um I'll give it and list it for uh. Public or something. I don't know. I already forgot. I'm just gonna wait for Uplando to tell me what to do. That's my plan. <laughs> Uplando knows best. He does. He does know. Um, and, and he's uh, been sending me a list of winners, and they've been DMing me and making offers. I've been giving away every property and that I have pretty much in Little Italy, Chicago, for one Upix. Yeah, when I heard you were doing Little Italy, what? It's a, a big give. Well. At the time, I mean, Chicago for me was, uh, uh, well, not for me. Chicago for Icon ended up largely being a wash. Uh, we wanted to go for Greek Town, didn't work out because there were only 35 properties there. Um, but in that we went there, I was like already immediately in Little Italy. And um, at the time, I was like, I don't know, maybe Little Italy will end up being a, a thing. Uh, so I just picked up like 20 or 30 properties and um, forgot about them. And then when, when it came time for this, and uh, uh, he was asking if anybody wanted to donate anything, I went across my map, and then I saw a whole bunch of properties there, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not doing anything with those. So, yeah, that's that's my story. <laughs> no, um, what is it? The uh, Chicago is a weird spot for me. I definitely believe Chicago has a strong future, but I personally, I, I minted a ton in Chicago um, just because that was the first city I was in for an opening in Discord. Um, so that's where I first dropped my real bit of money. Um, so I, I have a ton of Chicago properties, but I don't see it. Like, I think a lot of people see it and I have no problem. I go to the piggy bank of Chicago every time I need to start another project. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, uh, Chicago, I just, I didn't realize how big it was when, when we were minting it. And I just, uh, I didn't think it would last like more than a few weeks. And, and I was wrong. I was yeah, no, I didn't. I I didn't think we'd still be minting Chicago. To be fair, I don't think any of us saw all of these cities coming. To yes, be fair. Yeah. Um, hundred percent. I mean, you still have multiple Rutherfords to mint in Chicago. That's how I like putting it. Like, there's over half a million properties there. Yeah. A lot of people keep saying because it's a tier one city, when it mints out, its value is going to go off. But I don't think that they look at what a circulating supply means. And like, yeah, you're going to have people as you're trying to raise the floor, people are going to be undercutting that floor all the way up. And it's yep. not to think I believe Chicago is going to go up in value. But I think that if you're somebody who's going in to invest because you want your fastest growth, that's not why I would invest in Chicago. There's plenty of good reasons, but that's not why. No, I, I no, I completely agree. If you're looking for those Manhattan sales prices, I'm not saying you're never going to get those in Chicago. I'm saying you're going to have to wait. Um, and it's exactly like you said because of the circulating supply. I'll be honest. I just didn't know it had 500,000 properties. I just I lit I literally had no idea how big Chicago was in real life. Um, but you know, you learn every day. Um, yeah, so that's where uh, it is a tier one city. It is a big name. There, everything that people say about Chicago in terms of it having that value is true. 
It's just that when you change one factor, in this case, the circulating supply, like you said, then you have to change the like the resulting outcome. And in this case, that I, I think that's time. I think that Chicago floor will reach Manhattan floor, but at a time of like, I mean, how long did it take Manhattan to reach there? Six months? Yeah, and Manhattan has, what, 50,000 properties, something like that? Right, exactly. So let's take six months and let's multiply that by 10. All right, so that's 60 months. That's going to be five years. Now, I'm not saying it's going to actually take five years, but... Yeah, because the players coming in and plenty of reasons. I think Chicago will hit that way before five years. But the way I'm looking at it, I mean, Chicago has as many, just for sale right now, has as many properties for sale as Staten Island, Brooklyn... The Fresno and Bakersfield combined, mm-hmm. and all of their flo- all of their floors are higher already. Now, if you're somebody that wants to go to Chicago, make yourself a nice grid to treasure hunt in, and you want the earnings because you're getting it at mint value versus the secondary, great reason. Um, but if you, I, I we'll see a 50k Bakersfield before we see a 25k uh, Chicago, without question. That's a bold statement. It's a bold statement for Bakersfield. Bakersfield minted once we had like we have a weird situation now where new where you had whales go into the Bronx and for the first time not be able to empty their bags. People have money true. to spend and are putting it in other places. No, that is true. And that is largely where the the the, the uh, most recent uh, swell of minting in Chicago has come from straight up is that everybody went into the Bronx. They wanted to do what they could for the Bronx. And then they were like, well, shit, the Bronx is done. I have money. And, you know, no one wants to just leave Opic sitting there. I, I, I'm i not even kidding. Like, I, I get that. That was that was me, too. I, I have right now, I've held on to, like, 168,000 Opics or so. Well, I mean, I earn, like, five to 10,000 a day. But, um, anyway, I'm, I'm just making sure that I stay over 100,000 because I'm giving away 100,000 Opics in the, in the cafe. Otherwise, I'd, I'd be basically at zero. Just because I don't like leaving Opics sitting in my balance. Yeah, no, I have a, I have a real problem where when I have Upix, it burns a hole in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just for something. I mean, it, for minting, for renting Spark, for whatever. It just, um, you know, put your money to work. <laughs> well, I mean, it may give us a billion ways to spend it now. It's mm-hmm. not even just property. It's, am I trying to be competitive and legit? Am I, do I want these Halloween ornaments? Do I want, like... There, do I want to build this structure? There's a billion ways to spend your Upix. It's too hard. It's hard to hold it. How long do you think we're going to be able to uh, leave our, our ornaments on this time? You think they're going to stop it after the first of the year? Um, I would. I I think maybe we get a grace period, but I don't. I don't know. I don't think it'll be long, unfortunately. No, I mean. I, I would have liked to have seen these ornaments. Like, I don't know why we couldn't do this contest a little bit earlier. And obviously, that's above my pay grade, but I. Yeah. Why, why are we back to the same situation we were at in Halloween where yep. you're going to give like a week? I, I completely agree. That's, I, and all I can think is that NFL, because they were working on making sure that that super duper project uh, got finished first. And that, I'm not going to argue that, that that isn't more important. But it is a little disheartening to, to run into the same. All right, here you go. You have one week to decorate. Like, yeah. come on, man. <laughs> that's where that's where I I even keep pushing in, in the chat and anywhere I can. Even just the idea for community governance for Halloween Town and Christmas Land. I don't know why, but those two just seem like the most obvious for me. We have the ornaments. Mm-hmm. We have people that want want to continue to decorate. There's why can't we? Yeah, and that is an area where, I'm sorry, but if you want to argue the whole that's not realistic one-to-one in the real world, bullshit. There are plenty of places in the real world you can go to that are essentially Halloween all year round and are essentially Christmas all year round. They are obviously, you know, it's not like your average town, but I assure you they exist. They're all small. (laughs) Think about about Salem, Mass. I mean, yeah, it's not Halloween exactly, but that's... That's what it's known for. Like, no, but, it's literally an entire town known for witches and Halloween. No, that's actually a good example too. Yeah, and and it, it's exactly for it. You have you have certain towns that, by the nature of their history or their geography, or in some cases just their name, 
they end up being they end up having a shtick. Um, and I mean, not not to say that like you know the stuff in Salem is shtick. That's not. But but you get the point I'm making there. There there there's a tie there, and there's a tourist element. And so if you have a tourist element, you try and keep that year round. Oh yeah, there's there's people that like I know people in the real world that will go visit Salem in the off season. They're like, yeah, we miss a couple things, but like the things I really want to see, I just don't want to be crowded when I go yep. see it. Exactly, and so for that exact reason, there's no reason to not allow that. And like I think that you know, let's take let's Fourth of July. Maybe they uh, allow Fourth of July uh, um, uh, cosmetics and decorations. Uh, you should be able to have a patriotic neighborhood if you want. Just. I think that you, mm-hmm. without question, could, even if you only got one neighborhood for whatever reason, which I think would go against the community go- governance aspect of it, but the, you're going to have at least one neighborhood for all of these niches, without question. That somebody, yep. that a group of people will want to be in and then probably be more valuable because of it. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Um, and we're just going to have to see how that plays out. I think that they are keeping their options open. So, we'll see. I'm just vaguely, vague, vaguely specific. <laughs> yeah, and I just yeah yeah vaguely specific, specifically vague. Um, and we're just waiting on still a bunch of what we have, but but at least we got some stuff. At least we got the legits. We got the fan scores. We got upcoming gala, uh, which is gonna have some, which I I get okay. So if they're gonna be releasing unminted properties, that means straight up we've got properties that are locked in game. They've been locked forever, and we're gonna see some of them. In just a few days, right? Do, yeah. Do we know how that's getting unrolled? Is it all reverse auction style? Like, oh hell, I don't know if it's reverse auction style or not. Let me let me check that out. Um, you know, let me go to the web page. I hope it's not reverse auction. I'm so fucking sick of the reverse auction. It's just a weird mechanic that allows you to park money in a natural way. No, all right. Okay, straight up. I understand not allowing a proper auction because they don't want to allow the whales to game the system based on the the, the 17% earning rate. I get that. I I get that. That's why I think they should do silent auctions. No, I think that's a great thing. Who who values it the most and you get it at the end. Yeah. What's the market value it at? Because with a silent auction, you only get to make one bid and you have to hope that your bid was more than what everyone else bid, but not by a whole bunch. Even if you're yep, talking, even if you're trying to overdo it to get the to get the earnings, you still have to just constantly do that game theory thing of, well, shit, how much is Dizzy Disky going to put down? Or uh, TM did say he had that much money, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, no, I mean, you, it's going to be a situation where I think obviously some people will throw huge amounts at it, but I mean, you can't do that infinitely. Maybe you can, maybe you got that much money, but it it definitely allows for, a, at least in theory, oh, I think hell. it allows for better than what we have now. Alright, okay, Um, I take back what I said about doing a proper auction for this one time only. Uh, No, they should just do a proper auction. Let them go as high as they want. Because 50% of the UPEX proceeds from their auctions are going to be donated to St. Jude's Hospital to support the ongoing care of children in need. This is the time okay. where you don't put a cap on it. Yep, nope, I, I completely concur. It, 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 yeah, you got no fight with me on that. Like, the, this, the, this is the one. Come on. Who's going to argue against that? This is one more of the... I'm not going to lie, if, they, if it ends up being a reverse auction starting at like 25000 I'm going to be a little bit pissed. Yeah, they definitely shouldn't do that. Why would you limit what I could give kids? Right, and like, I mean, I don't, I don't have the money that that kind of money to throw down on that. But we know people that do. Um, and Rockefeller went for like forty thousand. So, in my opinion, whatever the most expensive landmark you've sold, that's your minimum for what you can allow. Just come on, charity. But um, I mean, you're gonna have people still fighting. It doesn't matter what that price is. I mean. People, even though Abdullah scooped up a lot of this crap, uh, there are other people with big balances that wanted this stuff oh, yeah. too. They still have big balances. Yeah. Uh, these are okay. So, um, the community submitted properties are going to be ten rare and ultra rare properties. 
in addition to a collection. Oh, uh, okay. So the properties from Upland are going to be five unminted ultra rare properties and one unminted train terminal. I wonder if that is Staten Island. Could be. Um, is that? I mean, I know there's. A, I know there's at least one or two places that have some unminted train terminals because there's some places where they've only let like half of them go. Oh, I guess technically that's a bus, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bus. So maybe this does uh, say yeah, train no, terminal, it's... right? So is there in Brooklyn? Are there any locked? Let's, uh, let's go I'm check looking... that out. Yeah. In any Brooklyn... event, so ultra rare properties unminted. So that's so if, if you're if you're trying to speculate, if you're going around the map, try that. That's what you're looking for. I do believe we have train terminals in Oakland not opened. Yep, we have two in Oakland. That could be one of them. That'd be sweet. I want to see some attention thrown Oakland's way. I, I like Oakland, and I think that Oakland is largely being overlooked right now. And I'm fine with it because I'm buying. But I think once we get businesses, especially with all the hype with San Fran and Fresno for businesses, Oakland's right there in the middle. It's got some of your larger properties like Fresno, not quite as much, not quite as big, but you got some larger properties you could do stuff with, and you're right there next to San Francisco. Oh, right on. By the way, I raised an issue, and Upland is apparently like going like Back to the Future style and answering it just time and time again. First, I'm like, yeah, okay, you don't want to do the, the auctions or whatever, and then it's like, oh, shit, it's for charity. Okay, do that kind of auction. And then I'm like, well, because you, know, you don't want to do the earnings thing, and they're like, hey, we already thought about that. They fixed it. They fixed that issue. They are putting in a minting cap. So um, <clears throat> they have created a, an account managed by the Upland team strictly for the purpose of the auction house. Otherwise, the account's not going to claim ownership of any additional properties, and all Upix earnings will be burned after the conclusion of the auction. So that account will mint the property, thereby establishing the dividends then the players are free to pay whatever the whatever they want above that price. I love that. Right? I love that. That is the correct way to do that. Perfect. Then that means so that has to mean they can maybe look at doing a proper auction like uh players will be free to bid on this property as much as they like. Property earnings will be calculated based on the minting for the right. So they're going to be yeah. Um, and I was seeing here about the uh, the auctions channel in the Discord server. So they are doing it the right way. They're doing a proper auction. Oh, this is exciting. That, yeah, that means that it can't, if they're using the auctions channel in the Discord server, it can't be a reverse. This this was a good move. And, uh, this is, and this is what I'm talking about. Upland, you know, I don't always necessarily see what they do and go, all right, I'm 100% satisfied. But in pretty much everything they've done as of re as of lately, I am at least happy with the steps we're taking forward. Oh, absolutely. We're taking and they've taken so many more steps forward than they've taken steps back. Absolutely. Uh, th but I am pleased as punch for this. I'm gonna I'm gonna be in there, man. I can't I can't wait to watch this happen. I mean, I'm I don't have the I don't have the liquid to actually throw down on any of this, and I I knew I wouldn't going in. That was kind of my thing. Was I was like I know I didn't ha I wasn't gonna be able to do much in terms of that kind of donation, and that's why I was like, what can I give away? And that I. That's why I gave away all the properties and the block explorers and stuff, because, you know, I wish I had, like, millions and millions of Upix to put down on this. There, even, I mean, I don't think that I even could liquidate my account to get what some of these properties are exactly. going. Exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll be that kind of player. Um, all I know is that I am, I'm happy. I'm happy to see what these do, regardless whether I can pick it up or not. I think that's a yep. great... Uh, you can assess the health of the community, really, I think, okay. pretty well by looking at what some of this stuff goes for. You know what I'd like to see, actually? Uh, the, like, it, they're going to do... I think I how to put this, because I don't want to come off as callous, but... We all know, basically, the players that, the, that these auctions are going to come down to. It, it's going to be yeah. a handful of people. Right? Without question, yeah. I mean, if you've been around the community, you know, you pretty much know who those guys are. Exactly. I, I don't have a problem with that, especially considering this is going to go to charity. I am thinking, though, like, 
all right, let's treat this like an actual gala. Let's sell tickets to the thing. They should sell tickets like to be able to um to be on the call or whatever for the recording. Like I think that you know when when whenever you know we were talking about TM earlier, it's a good example. Whenever TM inevitably shows up to put in his bids or whatever, I feel like he should be allowed to be like on that call. Oh, one hundred percent. Like I want to hear think, them talking about it. And I think that'd be good self promotion, and think that that'd be good for a lot of things. Absolutely. No, I, I would like to see them handle this uh, in, a, in a more community fashion than they have their past auctions. Um, I just I think it'd be great to hear some of the people that are bidding talk. And at the end of the day, too, I mean, we can say like, yeah, the lower players will never get this stuff and complain about that. But these are also players that, let's be real, as much as they've g- played the game, they've invested in this game, too. So... You pay up big dollars, I mean, you get big rewards. It's just how it is. Absolutely. No, and that's, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's actually uh, about all the time we have uh, for this week. Uh, run a little bit long here. But uh, it was great to have, uh, have you with me this week, as always, Cam. And uh, thanks for showing up, Kevin. I see you there. Um, I want to thank everyone for listening to the future. And uh, make sure to tune in every Sunday at noon Pacific time to join the chat. I want you to have a great... Uh, Have a great week and be safe out there. Later, guys.